it's Susan here with the Outdoor Gear Review and obviously I'm behind the wheel of the Drifter today. And I'm here controlling the camera. Everyone, thank you all so very much for joining us for this adventure. We are on the road for three days. This is an overland travel and hiking adventure and we cannot wait to share all of these fun experiences with you all. For this trip, Luke and I decided to hit the road and we wanted to have a true overlanding trip. So we did not make plans. But as of this morning, we had a wonderful Patreon supporter donate a campsite at Lake James State Park. And that is a couple hours from where we live, but that's where our adventure is gonna start. Lake James is very, very close to Old North Carolina 105 Kessler Memorial Highway, which is a gravel road that goes through the Pisgah National Forest up towards the Linville Falls. It is a really cool road. We could come back home that way, spend a couple days exploring, hiking around. That'd be fun. Right. I think that sounds fun. Also, it is snowing. Not so much right now where we were, but when we left home, it is snowing and there's advisories everywhere for snow. And it seems like it's gonna hit more south. So that may play a role into where we decide to go and what we decide to do. If it's very snowy and icy, those back roads in Pisgah won't be a good idea. Susie brings up a good point. The weather forecast is very interesting. As of yesterday, no big deal. Today, the forecast says that it's more of an issue. There will be more snow falling in the southern part of North Carolina, essentially where we are headed right now. So maybe tonight we'll get a couple of inches of snow and tomorrow morning we will ultimately decide what we will do. I mean, we could throw caution to the wind, head to the coast. They are supposed to get a big winter storm. We could do anything, everyone, and we are going to have a blast, no doubt about it. So here's a funny story to share with you all about this area. Some years back, my friends and I, we wanted to go see the latest Batman movie with Christian Bale. It was sold out where we live at, but we found availability down here in Lenore, North Carolina. So we find the theater, we go inside, and it's a like a rear projection screen television that's probably like 55 inches, and it's hooked up to a sound system, and one of the speakers is like hanging out of the wall. <laughs> it was the craziest, most like redneck thing I've ever been to. <laughs> we had a fantastic time because we fit right in, of course. Rednecks always have a good time with rednecks. But um, yeah, it was pretty funny. The thing is, you couldn't really understand like half of the movie because it was like stereo. So like sound was coming through one speaker, but not the other. So like things just didn't quite add up. It was interesting. closed oh. okay well that's a no-go this place is closed you win some you lose some that's how it goes it's funny everybody as we're driving these back roads, I've noticed that just about everyone has a trampoline, but every single one of them are absolutely destroyed. Something bad's happened here. We have to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> and I'll let you do it.
So we have made it to our campsite. I will get out and check it out with you all real quick. Basically, we are at the end of a cul-de-sac and we have this entire state park to ourselves. There's no one here. This is a tent site, but we have no tent. We have the drifter. Food vault, fire pit, picnic table, and here's a trail that goes all the way down to the lake. At the lake, there are some really nice picnic tables with shelters over them, some nice bathrooms. So we're gonna head down there, park, start cooking up our lunch, and take advantage of that shelter and have a nice view of the lake. Eat. This is a really nice state park. Lake James, Nebo, North Carolina. It is fantastic. It is very well taken care of. There's no trash anywhere. There looks like there's trails everywhere. Tonight, the low is supposed to be around like 24 degrees, something like that, which isn't too bad, except for the fact that this area is like not prepared for snow and ice at all. Where we live, they start salting and treating the roads 24 hours ahead of any storm. Um, it's actually pretty funny because the roads and parking lots will be white with salt way before any storm hits. And down here, they do not salt the roads. They probably don't even have the means. No. It's not something that they do because snow doesn't happen that often. We didn't want to make a big meal because it is actually later in the afternoon, so it doesn't make any sense to have lunch, have dinner so close together. Ah. Toasting the bottom is awesome. That was a good idea. Mm -hmm. This is really good. It is good. Yeah. Mm. Is that snowy enough for you? It is so snowy and the flakes are huge. They are huge. One of the cool things about a Mr. Heater is that you can connect those to the big boy propane tanks. Maybe one day, if I'm doing like a solo trip and it's really cold, I might do that. I tell you what, it makes all the difference in the world. It is so nice, so comfortable already. Not even five minutes and it's just super warm in here.
Looks like we wrapped up with a blanket. We have some hot coffee. We're just watching it snow. Since we've come here, we've seen absolutely no one the entire time. I know, there's nobody here. <laughs> For the most part, the rain and the snow looks to be over. So Susie and I are heading down to the lake. Susie found a mud hole. <laughs> Congratulations, Susie. You took us to the muddiest place on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> At any moment, we can sink in this. Yeah. But it is beautiful. It is pretty. So back at home, it's nice and snowy, and our son, he just got off work, and he sent a message a few minutes ago saying, hey, I'm leaving work, going home, and then he just sent another text, and this is what it said. Hey mom, I got into a car accident and my left arm is missing. That's the text every mother wants to get. <laughs> <laughs> I love his sense of humor. <laughs> he is so funny. Gosh, that's so small. <laughs> yeah. Going down. Jump. I mean, <laughs> jump. <laughs> That's like eight feet. Are you sure you should do that? He did go down. Oh, yeah. Champion of the universe. Nice. Wow. I hear you, buddy. I know. Tell her. It's her fault. I know. It really is. He's mad at you. Oh my gosh, he is. I'm so sorry. I don't know if the GoPro picked that up, but there was a crane sitting here. Whoa. He flew off and uh, he's rather mad. He's up in the tree over here. He is so mad. <laughs> Back to 
Drifter. All right. Susie, what do you think about dinner? Yes, I'm starving. Let's do it. Tonight we're having chicken parmesan with a chicken Caesar salad. Oh yeah. Very, very tasty and very easy to make. I tell you everybody, today has been a lot of fun. We have explored this place probably like 2%. Like this lake is so huge. There's so many trails. I know, just barely, yeah. barely got into it. We talked to one park ranger, very nice guy. He said the place was ours, have fun. Um, there is a camp host here and we went to knock on his door and that was a, like around like 530 and he was passed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could see right through the door. He was just passed out. We didn't even bother him. You know, everyone. Some of my favorite childhood memories involve just sitting around a fire. Now, of course, we didn't have anything like this, but um, like my teenage years, we would go camping, my friends and I, all the time. We called it, we were like the hood, that's what we called ourselves. And uh, we would go camping, stay up all night long, just having fun, up on top of the mountain, Christmas tree field. It was a blast. Let's make this fire hotter. Boy, that does make it hotter, babe. Yeah. Whoa. Good morning, everybody. It is about seven o'clock in the morning. It is about 20 degrees outside. Everything's iced up, except for the road. The road is dry. We are good to go. Basically anywhere that we want to. Hi, kitty. <laughs> I'm sorry she hurt your feelings like that, everyone. Um, that's what I live with. <laughs> Anyways, we have Heater Buddy who's going, warming things up nicely. I need to grab my phone, start looking at some maps, and come up with a plan. So, breakfast done, heater buddy on, coffee made. We've been busy. Yes, we and have. And it's been good. And that looks oh, freaking amazing. It looks so great. Yum. Everyone, cheers. Susie, cheers. Cheers. Mmm. 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 Piping hot, Jim. Good mm. because it's piping cold outside. Mm -hmm. So basically we are going to eat, not talk very much. We're going to take a quick walk down to the lake and then it's time to hit the road. I believe we have our plans now. Yeah. This is going to be fun. We're on the hunt for snow. <laughs> That's pretty much the name of the snow game. Hunters. Snow hunters. Snow hunters. <laughs> we left where it was snowing to come to a place where it wasn't to go back to a place where it did snow.
So we are now on Old North Carolina 105. And that means that we are heading basically to the Linville Falls. We will not make it that far tonight. We will stop and basically set up camp somewhere. Shortly, this road will turn to gravel and we'll head up into the mountains and I am excited. It is so beautiful up there and I have so many memories to share with you all, some pretty funny. So here we go, everyone. From this point on, the road is gravel. And you may be wondering, Luke, are you going to air down the tires? Heck no. Most people do not air down tires for gravel roads. If it's bumpy, slow down. That's what you do. Some people will air down and drive fast. That's pretty dangerous, really. If you hit washboarding, you'll just fly right off the road. Don't do it. Otherwise, just slow down and enjoy it. Wow, that is beautiful. It is beautiful. Now you all may remember this spot. Years and years ago on Christmas, I left you all and went camping to film a video. I came here. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I hiked down this road, slept in a valley. It was gorgeous and freezing, freezing cold. And I remember that night, I heard this weird noise. It sounded like somebody was beating a car hood with like a sledgehammer or something. Oh my. But it was super far away. Couldn't really make it out. This is an area that I spent a lot of time in, especially around like 18, 19. As soon as my buddies and I, we got cars, we came out here all the time and explored. Up here just a little ways, I'll show you a place that I went camping at. Back in the day, we roughed it. People don't know <laughs> what roughing is. How you roughed it? Yeah. <laughs> So that is Lake James down there. That is where we camped at last night. What a beautiful place. Now it's funny that we stopped here because this is exactly where my buddy and I camped one night. When I was like 18 or 19 years old or so, I was working a third shift stocking job. And we decided that we were going to go camping. So everything works out so we can go camping and we hit the road. And we got started like around nine o'clock at night. It's dark, it starts raining, it gets super foggy, and we hop on old 105 here, and we drive and drive and drive, and we got to the point where we just couldn't see anything at all. We pulled over here, <laughs> grabbed a piece of plastic out of the truck, threw down our sleeping bags, and we went to sleep. We slept right here on the side of the road with it just raining on top of this piece of plastic, and when we woke up, we saw that, and it was just amazing. So the road continues this way, but there's this side trail over here. <laughs> you guys know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, we know Kitty.
So we have a couple of trails here. Over Mountain Victory, 1780 National Historic Trail. We are going to continue on this road because I want to know where it goes to. And then if it's just a dead end, we will turn around, come back and hike that road to see where that goes and get some hiking in for today. So look what we found. According to our maps, this road ends basically right up here. Actually, right there. Literally. <laughs> All right, well, we came back to the Victory Trail. We figured we would walk a little bit of this. Susie looked this up and this trail is like 300 miles long, goes through three states or something. Yeah, I think it's four states. Oh, four states? Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and it's in a historic trail. And then Luke saw that it's actually part of the Mountain to Sea Trail, at least for North Carolina. So, I figured we would just hike a little bit of it. That's what it's about when you're out exploring. There may not be any kind of payoff. It might just be a nice trail through the woods. It's almost like a road. So I figured that would be good for the conditions that we have today. Um, the snow that's on the ground is very wet and it could be slippery if we were doing any kind of steep trails. So a road would be very good for hiking. Susie really does bring up a good point. There are so many awesome trails in this area, but with this snow, which is super slick, most of those would not be a good idea right now. They are so steep. They are. <laughs> One thing to keep in mind when you're out on your adventure is to do things that fit the adventure you're having. We don't want wet clothes because we don't have an easy way to dry them. It's cold, so they wouldn't dry. It's not a good idea to get in a situation where we could slip and fall. Don't need any broken bones as well. Do a running jump over this. The whole thing? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go this way instead. <laughs> okay. Gone is the road, and now we have a trail. And we continue basically to go down, down, and down. This is awesome. The snow is just falling from everywhere. Well, we have been following the trail and it is closing in, but there's also a pretty good size little stream here. We did take a look at the map and it looks like this trail meets up with a paved road and we're not sure where that location would be at. I wish we could get to the end, but it's just not going to happen today. Whew. 
it's funny, that trail didn't have any grand views or anything like that, but it was absolutely beautiful. With the snow falling off the trees, it was pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Bon appetit, everyone. It is lunchtime. The amazing Susie has been slaving away, harnessing nutrition from the forest. <laughs> <laughs> it really took a lot out of her, to be honest. I'm beat, guys. <laughs> Where she found a chicken, <laughs> I don't you know. You never know what's in these woods. <laughs> <laughs> so, a guy pulled in. He went down the same way that we went down. He's trying to make some sort of loop essentially to run. So run it down, hit whatever road that is way down there, and somehow bring it back around. Mm -hmm. That is, like, that dude's going out for a, a long run. Yeah, that's a <laughs> trek, isn't it? That's a trek. mud hole. Luckily we have two things to get us out of it. Speed and power. <laughs> <laughs> By the way everyone, Susan is driving not only because she's a great driver and she looks great, but I'm the cameraman so I'm running the roads filming all this. Wow that is beautiful. Keep on coming. Susie, you did an amazing job. Did I? Yes, you did. Susie's a good yes. driver.
Now, as you all can see here, I'm using this rock as a chopping block, but I'm making sure not to swing so strongly that I go all the way through the wood and hit that. You never want to mess up the blade of your tool. It's all about control. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Life is good. Life is great. You know, the key to life is that you have to make it good. Mm -hmm. It's not about money. It's not about things. Everybody has a decision to make. Everybody has choices. If you live in a hell hole, it's your choice to stay there. If you don't like the way your life is going, it's your choice to change that, to move on. Definitely, all about choices. Okay, I had to move. Too much smoke. Folks, this happens to be one of the coolest trees ever. <laughs> it arches over the truck. I know, that's so cool. I thought it was broke, <laughs> but it's just grown that way. Yeah. So we have all sorts of firewood here stacked up, but I could tell that some asshole cut those green limbs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Green don't burn unless you have a heck of a fire going. So too green to burn now, maybe in a couple of months you can burn it. In the truck, I always keep a full-size axe and handsaw, a good one. It's a good idea. You never know when you're overlanding, you're taking back roads when you will come across fallen trees and whatnot. And plus for making fire, splitting logs. Turkey burgers for the win. The sun is going down. Our fire is almost out, but it's putting out some good heat. Yes, I feel it. <laughs> good idea. Eat by the fire. Oh man. Wow, this looks phenomenal. Yum. Yeah. Simple but good. Mm. Open face for the win. Yeah. Tell ya, the temperature is dropping big time, isn't it? cold up here. <laughs> <laughs> Today I had an absolute blast driving the tundra up this back road and the steep parts and going down hills. I really enjoyed that and um, you know Luke said hey you did a great job driving because there was some muddy spots and some slick spots and big holes and big rocks to avoid and it's nothing new for me. I grew up on a farm. My dad was always having me and my brother drive the tractors and drive his trucks. But today just kind of brought back some of those fun memories I had growing up and I've enjoyed every minute of today. It is so incredibly comfortable, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it's so nice. That actually feels good to lay down. It does. Yeah. Well, everybody, it's about nine o'clock. Susan and I, we finished up dinner. We actually watched a movie. We've been sitting here watching the twinkling lights from the city. It's definitely pretty. It is pretty, and we even saw some stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. The Big Dipper is out. Yeah. This has been an awesome overland adventure. It really has been. I've enjoyed it tremendously. We started at a lake. 
We headed up into the mountains. We did some off-roading. It's been really fun. All right. Well, everybody, have a good night. We'll see you in the morning. Bye. Good night. Good night. Now, oh, check out Mr. Heater Buddy. Bum, bum, bum. Heater Buddy's doing his job like a champion. Good morning, everybody. I've got the coffee brewing, and it's going to be a beautiful day. It's roughly six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, we slept in. Yes, we slept in, oops. I tell you what, it was just too dang comfortable and warm inside of the truck. Yeah, that's the second problem with heater buddy. Number one, it ruins you. It ruined you. Number two, it makes you sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Last night, probably three o'clock in the morning, we're both sleeping wonderfully, and we hear this racket, okay? It is like the perfect combination of like engine noise and like metal on metal grinding. And like the vehicle that drove by sounded like a tank. It was like the perfect harmony of chaos. It was the loudest, Worst noise I've ever heard, ever. In a way, I'm impressed. What do you all think about the uh, shooting can? Susan noticed that yesterday. It's a Mountain Dew can that someone's tied a string to and throw it over a limb so they can sit back here and shoot the can over the gorge. That's pretty nice. I gotta be honest, that's pretty nice. I'm impressed by their effort to get it out there right. and tie it up. One thing for sure I learned on this trip is that we need an actual hard type of tote container for food because I had baked muffins and made granola bars and things like that for our trip. And this is what happens to homemade muffins in a bag when Luke throws the heavy cooler bag on top of them. Honestly, folks, I thought they could support the weight because Wait. they're so dense. <laughs> I'm just kidding, they're really tasty. And that's all my fault. I'm going to take some of those crumbs, eh, right here, and I'm going to uh, pour coffee on it, so. Give me a jolt. When you are overlanding, it's important to clean up your tools and what you cook with and all your utensils. So what we came up with is we have a lid for a liter water bottle and we have drilled holes in the top. So things for the French press, you really almost need almost like a spray nozzle. So this works well to clean it up. And as you can see, it doesn't use a ton of water. You can control the, the flow by how hard you squeeze on the bottle. And it just cleans it up. And then we use paper towels to dry everything up. For this adventure, everyone, we have one more stop to make, one more story to share, and then it's time for us to return to our daily lives, back to work.
Okay, so we have made it to Wiseman's View, and what an incredible place. This section of Pisca here is super popular, especially at nighttime. I've never seen a park ranger out this way ever. Well, many years ago, I'm out here with my pals, we're chilling, and this group comes in. It was a guy and two girls, and you could just smell the booze radiating off of them. So we're talking to them, and they're like, oh yeah, man. We see the brown mountain lights all the time. Anyway, so like we're having a chit chat back and forth. And one of the ladies, she is standing like right over here, right? I notice that she's being awfully quiet and I'm just watching her. And that's when and she turns over, barfs all over herself. Oh my God. <laughs> but it was funny because like it was a silent puke. We nicknamed her the silent puker. <laughs> And so, that is really what you guys are subscribing to with the Outdoor Gear Review. Hard-hitting stories. It's raw. It's candid. We keep it real. It's what we do. That's what we do. Yeah. It is what it is. You know, talking about the Brown Mountain Lights, I really have been out here, I mean, five dozen times, and I've never seen anything. Unfortunately, I don't know. That is absolutely gorgeous. It's amazing, and it never gets old seeing this view. It doesn't. Well, everyone, that pretty much wraps it up for this adventure. Susan and I have maybe an hour plus to get home. This has been fantastic. Thank you all so very much for joining us. On to the next. It's been a blast. We had so much fun overlanding for three days. Now it's time to get back to reality, but we'll catch you on the next one. Strength and honor, everyone. Bye. Bye. Such a weird way of getting in. <laughs> that was weird. I'm weird, sorry. Are you really going down? Oh! I'm going down. <laughs>